Hello everybody, it's Tony Franklin here. Hey, I wanted to bring up a subject which I'm asked about quite a lot, and that is the discussion between unlined and lined fretless basses. I've always played the unlined from the very beginning, and it took a little while to get into it. Fretted bass was pretty quick and easy for me, I have to say, even at a young age, but the fretless, took a few years to really get to that point where I felt like I was owning it instead of it owning me. All right, and into a little music theory here. To me, the most important interval in the scale or in the chord is the third. Why do I say that? Because if you have a whole orchestra play the root and the fifth, in, if we're in the key of A, that would be the, the low, would be an A, and then the fifth would be the E. Right, so at that point, it's not a chord. It's neither major nor minor. You could have the whole orchestra play those two notes spread between the lows and the highs, playing the A and the E, Q orchestra. If you have one instrument in that whole orchestra play the third, the major third would be the C sharp, all right? One instrument play that C sharp and now, instead of playing a root and fifth, the whole orchestra is playing a major chord. Because of that one instrument. If that one instrument was to change it to a C natural, which is the minor third, we now have the whole orchestra playing A minor. So let's take that to the fretless bass and the reason for my discussion, and I'm going to illustrate it, why I think that the unlined fretless is superior. Yes, I'll say it. I might ruffle a few feathers by saying that. If we can elicit some conversation about this, I welcome it. And I'm not putting down the, the lined fretless players because I understand the reasons for it. It's a visual aid. I have the visual aid. I have the dots, right? I have the dots on the side. I'm not completely blind. I need dots. I refer to those. I look at them. They are landmarks. They're a map for me, okay? So they are important. And then I think of the classical players who play without all of that, the cellists and the bassists. It's about muscle memory and the visual and all of it, but that's a whole other discussion. So, <laughs> I'm gonna illustrate something here, very, very powerful, that will show my point. Open D, all right? Let's check that on the tuner. All right pretty much perfectly in tune there. And then on the string above it, the, the D string, so the G string, I'm gonna play the F sharp, which is the third in the chord, right? The D and then the F sharp is the third. All right, I'm gonna tune it on the tuner first. So it's perfectly in tune, all right? F sharp. Get that perfectly there, okay? There's that F sharp. Perfectly in tune with the tuner. And the low D. So we got a third. That doesn't sound right to me. Let's just check. Yeah. sounds right. 
right to me. They don't have that, you know, mod modulation. Right? Let's check that F sharp now on the tuner. Uh oh. It's quite a bit flatter. Sounds right to me. Check it again. Yep. Yeah. The third is probably the trickiest and the most powerful interval. Let's do it on the C sharp. We'll do it on the A, okay? Open A. Nicely in tune. All right, let's do the C sharp. Put it perfectly in tune first. There it is. And the open A. Doesn't sound good. Now it sounds right. Check that C sharp. So anytime you're playing a third, and that doesn't just relate to the open strings, it relates to any third in the scale if you're doing a run. Got other instruments there. You have to make subtle adjustments. I've got used to doing that over the years, and it is a very subtle adjustment. You see basses, you see guitars that have the fanned frets, you see them that have those squiggly frets to try to compensate for this, to put it perfectly in tune. But the problem is this, the musical scale is not perfectly subdivided. It isn't a mathematical cut where it's all perfectly cut into 12 semitone equal parts. Some of them are more or less. And there are other places that that happens in the scale as well. So that was the real main offender though, that I wanted to offend her. <laughs> I'm sure I'm gonna spark some discussion here, but which is what I hope to do. And to me, I tell people that the line fretless is a great starting point, but ultimately you gotta rely on your ears. And I get used to seeing where those points are as well, I play, see, I, I go there. I'm not saying how good I am. It's just something that I got used to doing because I know that it's gonna be sound better. It sounds better, even though it may not be perfectly in tune with the tuner. Oh, what a discussion this is going to be. Discuss it, folks. I look forward to hearing your comments, reading your comments on all this, and uh, all the best. And you can slide into it, that wasn't perfect. Enough. Have fun with that, folks. Tony Franklin, out.